Hello guys, myself Neha Gupta, your mentor for current affairs. So let's begin today's video which contains 30 questions of your current affairs. So guys, the first question that we have is which is the nodal agency of Sri Manuraksha project? So out of these options, option 5 that is NIMHANS is the right answer. So NIMHANS stands for National Institute of Mental Health and Neurosciences and it is basically a Bangalore based organization. Now the Ministry of Women and Child Development has launched this Sri uh, Manuraksha initiative. Now you would know that on March 8 we have International Women's Day and in the wake of that Indian government is celebrating in International Women's Day week from March 1st to March 8th and during the celebration of this week uh, the Ministry of Women and Child Development has launched this Sri Manuraksha project. Now what is the basic purpose of this project? The basic purpose is to provide mental health training to 6000 workers of the one stop centers. Okay, so before moving into anything else, I would like to tell you the detail of this one stop center. Otherwise, you would not be able to grasp the gist of this entire views. So basically in 2015, one stop center scheme was launched by Ministry of uh, Women and Child Development in order to provide help to the victims of violence, the women victims of domestic violence. Okay. So now with the training given to the functionaries of these one stop Sakhi centers, they will definitely propagate that training to their victims, to the victims who are coming for seeking help from them. Thus, the overall purpose is to empower women by providing them, them with the mental health training. And in this entire initiative, the Nimhans is helping the Ministry of Women and Child Development. Apart from this, Smriti Rani, the minister, has also made this announcement to launch Nari Adalat on a pilot basis to fast track the entire justice delivery system. But guys, this is just in the planning stage. So that is all for this news. Now let's move on to the next question. Where was the NIC Tech Conclave 2022 held? So guys, New Delhi is the right answer. National Informatics Centers. If you come across any government website, you would have seen this name at the bottom of that website. Guys, NIC is the IT arm of the government of India. Majority of the websites are developed by NIT, NIC only. Okay. I'm talking about the government websites, be it the state government, be it the uh, central government. So this NIC regularly or basically periodically, we should say, conducts its conclave that aims to know or it, that aims to search for the new technologies that are there in the market that can be used in effective digital governance. This year, this conclave was organized and it was the third edition of this conclave. What is the theme of this conclave? The conclave's theme was next generation technologies for digital government. So the next question is, what is the outlay of relief and rehabilitation of migrants and repatriates scheme? So guys, this scheme has also got extension recently for off five years. So this will now be applicable till, till FY26. What is the total outlay? So total outlay is rupees 1,452 crores. So this much amount has been allocated for the further five years. Now, what is the purpose? The name itself, the name of this scheme itself is highlighting the purpose of this scheme. Okay, that is to provide the rehabilitation support to the migrants who are coming back to India. Okay, one example how the scheme is effectively providing the help is given by the news agency itself. That is, it was mentioned in the PIB itself that the government, central government is providing funds to the West Bengal government in order to facilitate the rehabilitation of the people who have returned from Bangladesh. Okay, or the migrants from Bangladesh. So that is one example in the Ukraine crisis at the present moment people are coming from Ukraine. However, majority of them are students, but still if there is a person who has everything of his set up in Ukraine and now he has to leave that and come in, come to India to start everything from scratch. So in that journey from scratch to some to success, the government is going to help these migrants. Okay, so now recently the seven sub schemes of this scheme have have got the extension. So I have discussed everything related to the scheme. Now let's move on to the next question. Which of the following is the new population category of the Swatch Sarvekshan 2022 survey? So here guys, option C is the right answer. 
now what is the swachh sarvekshan i hope that all of you know what is swachh sarvekshan but for those who don't know swachh sarvekshan guys is the cleanliness survey conducted by the ministry of housing and urban affairs to give ranking to the cities okay on the basis of the cleanliness measures and the performance of these cities okay swachh sarvekshan that is the idea but that is not the only explanation guys there is an astonishing fact attached to this survey and that fact is that this is the world's largest cleanliness urban survey okay so that is one thing apart from this there is another fact that all the words all the statements that are mentioned here they have already been announced by the ministry of housing and urban affairs in september 2021 only at that moment of time also this seventh that uh, the field assessment of the seventh swachh sarvekshan was launched and at this moment also the same news is again there okay so maybe the flagging of ceremony of this field assessment was uh, organized recently that is why it is in the news now what are the facts that can be asked in the examination first is the theme theme keh lo focus keh lo philosophy keh lo whichever word you want to use but that is the focus that is jan bhagidari or people first okay the new indicator so indicators are used to rank the cities so swachh technology challenge has been introduced for this year's survey new categories now these categories are the uh, ca eligibility categories for the cities which cities will be uh, will be assessed under the swachh sarvekshan so here two new categories have been announced to expand the scope of this survey one is that small cities which have up to uh 50k 15k 15000 population and second category is the small cities that have 15 to 25000 people living in the city next important development in this swachh sarvekshan 2022 is that for the first time district level ranking will also be conducted now this swachh sarvekshan 2022 will focus on four themes okay four thematic areas will be there like the social inclusion zero dump then we have plastic waste management and transparency through digital enablement and urban local bodies okay so now guys understand this thing that this is the undercurrent of this entire swachh sarvekshan okay one uh, like the uh, philosophy we, you can say and these are the thematic areas or the pillars of this swachh sarvekshan so cities will be measured across these pillars also now here are some static facts related to the swachh sarvekshan have been given like the year of launch that is 2016 and at the time of launch you would be amazed to know that only 73 cities were assessed and by the time the latest survey was conducted that is in 2021 the number of cities has increased to 4320 cities so this is a huge uh, expansion in the scope of this swachh sarvekshan survey moving ahead with state has announced to establish the science innovation hub to inculcate a scientific temperament among students and encourage them to undertake research in science and technology so guys among all the options only one option is there that is doing a tremendously uh, hard work in tremendous hard work in improving the school level education and that i would say is delhi at the moment so in line uh, uh, continuing its efforts to improve the school education the delhi government has launched this science innovation hub now the purpose of this hub is clear but the school or the location where this hub is established this is also important for you all to know so the location is kautilya sarvodya co education school which is located at chirag and clevin delhi so that is guys the location of this hub next question with state police has launched anubhuti feedback management system so again delhi is the right answer recently delhi police has launched three digital initiatives okay and before moving into those initiatives you need to know that the uh, commissioner of delhi police is rakesh asthan that is one fact now you have three new initiatives launched by the delhi government that all aim to enhance the performance of the delhi police so first we have uh, anubhuti feedback management system the purpose of this system is to enable the citizens of delhi to provide feedback regarding the performance of delhi police and on the basis of the feedback the police performance will be improved next is the 
refurbished Delhi Police website that is to make the website of Delhi Police more user friendly and provide more and more information on the website. Third is e Chitta, which is considered as a backbone of the police reforms. So this e Chitta system will ensure that the police personnel are for, uh, are fulfilling their duties for eight hours okay they are fulfilling their entire shifts they are also performing well there is transparency in the performance of the personnel and all of these things that would enhance the uh, transparency and accountability of the police performance will be undertaken by this e chitta platform okay next question with state ud celebrates Herat festival. So guys, Herat is nothing but the Mahashivratri celebrated in Jammu and Kashmir. Which has become the top performing state in terms of per capita net state domestic product at current prices. So here the answer is Telangana. So guys, this information or this data is provided by Ministry of Statistics and Prog Program Implementation regarding the per capita net state domestic product at the current prices okay so here Telangana has performed the best in India by surpassing Maharashtra Karnataka and Tamil Nadu so guys Maharashtra has Mumbai which is the economic capital of India Karnataka has Bangalore the uh, Silicon Valley of India plus Karnataka is also having a booming startup ecosystem then you have Tamil Nadu which is really out outperforming other states in terms of renewable energy production okay so these are the main highlights of these states and surpassing all these states Telangana now has become the top performing states particularly in terms of per capita net state domestic product at current prices so what is it that has propelled the performance of the Telangana so much so guys telangana's efforts towards promoting the startups in the state towards recognizing the role of emerging technologies has really played a vital role in pushing forward the uh, performance of telangana okay so there is 2020 year i hope that you already know what i'm going to say ahead it is the year of ai that was announced by the government of Telangana. So this is just one example of the intention and the efforts that the government of Telangana has put in to increase its production, to increase the uh, ecosystem of the economic ecosystem of the state. Okay. Now the gross state domestic product of Telangana has also increased many folds from this, from approximately three lakhs something to this much okay so this is guys a huge increment in the cross state domestic product of Telangana as well so that is the entire news regarding the per capita net state domestic product at current prices next question that we have here is which edition of the India US military cooperation group meeting has taken place in Agra recently so guys it is the 19th edition this is basically an annual meeting between India and US military forces to enhance their cooperation apart from this there is nothing much in this news there was no theme also on which rocket was the geostationary operational environmental satellite t launched so option a guys is the right answer united launch alliance atlas v541 is the uh, name of the rocket on which this goes t satellite was launched first of all which organization has launched it so it is guys the national oceanic and atmospheric administration like we have indian meteorological department in india similar is this organization in us okay so for meteorological purposes this goes t satellite has been launched that is very easy so it will study the weather the hurricanes and other phenomena related to meteorology so that is the purpose now guys, there is another fact related to this satellite and that is that it is the third in the GOES series. Apart from this satellite, the other two satellites are GOES-16 and GOES-17. And these are the GOES-R series satellite. So guys, there is a distinction here. It's GOES-T and it's GOES-R GOES series. Okay, so we need to respect the names that this organization has given to its satellite okay apart from this there would be scientific distinctions between these two satellite series also but we need not to go into that we just need to restrict ourselves to the names that have been provided to us by this organization the purpose and the launch vehicle moving ahead 
which state has become the first basically which has become the first airline in the world to use solar fuels guys this is a misprinting i will rectify it before providing you the final pdf so here guys the right answer is swift uh, swiss international airlines what are the points key points that you need to know from this news first point is that this swiss international airlines is a subsidiary of lufthansa group okay next is that it has become the first airline in the world to use the solar fuel okay so airlines may aviation turbine fuel is used and now it has used the sun to liquid fuel that is the solar fuel the technology of transforming the solar energy into the liquid fuel that can be utilized by the airlines this technology is developed by sinilion okay so sinilion is the organization or basically an arm of the swift swiss institute of technology itself okay so it has developed this entire process and this organization is planning to commercialize this technology in germany this year okay to set up the manufacturing facility and later to expand this manufacturing facility in spain so this is guys the plan of this organization the points that i have highlighted here in this news are the key points that you need to remember you need to memorize from your upcoming examinations point of view like your rbi assistant is coming up so there you have 40 gk questions in your mains exam by which year will the global plastics treaty be finalized so yeah here guys 2024 is the right answer what is it like we have the paris agreement we have the montreal protocol for curbing the ozone depleting particles or or the elements in the atmosphere similarly now is the high time that we need to have the global plastics treaty this is not something that i am putting forward this is something that environmentalists and experts at the united nations environment assembly have put forward it is the right time that we need to have a legally binding treaty at the international level to tackle the menace of plastic pollution because plastic is not only one country's problem it is the global pro problem okay at the moment a lot of plastic waste is there in the oceans and in order to clean up we need a collaborated approach so that is something the experts have pointed out at the assembly and right now regarding this plastic treaty nothing is there it is just that the experts have uh, proposed that they will finalize this treaty by the year 2024 apart from this there is nothing in this treaty as of this moment okay apart from this also remember that the assembly took place in nairobi kenya and guys this is the place the headquarters of united nations environment program okay so basically at the headquarters of the unep this assembly took place now apart from this there are certain facts related to plastics okay you would understand why do we need a global approach to tackle plastic because more than 5 trillion pieces of plastics are in the world's oceans if each year 400 million tons of plastic is produced and 40% of that is single use and clearly this is not being produced by only one country it is the global production that we are talking about more than 8 million tons of plastic enters into the world ocean particularly through land okay from land it is being disposed of it is not like the people living on the ships they are throwing off their plastic waste in the ocean it is from the land that the that such huge amount of plastic waste is being disposed of into the seas not all plastic can be recycled now this is guys the major problem either because of the way it is made or because the recycling of plastic of such type of plastic becomes so uh, becomes very expensive okay animals on land or at sea they are at the at most danger because they can uh, they can consume the plastic or sometimes like small fishes get trapped into the plastic okay so this way the plastic is not only a menace for humans but it is also a really big problem for the animals also so th these are some of the facts related to plastic but But your question should be that: Do you need to memorize all these data presented here? No, guys, don't memorize this data. This was just for your additional information. 
okay if you want to memorize then you can memorize on okay guys give me a second you can memorize these two three statements because you can cite these as the examples in your esi answer writing okay if you have your rbi grade b coming up in the coming months so next question is which country does spur bank belong to so guys your russia is the right answer so guys you must have heard about the swift ban on russian banks and financial institutions but two banks of russia have been left out of the swift bank so these two banks are gazprom bank and spur bank spur bank why are these two banks being left out first of all know that in order to impose swift ban on any country eu's permission is required okay european union's permission is required european union trades a lot of goods particularly in the energy segment from russia okay imports oil and natural gas in a huge quantity from russia so in order to secure its imports eu has uh, exempted two banks as of now of russia so guys this is the entire story so this only happens at the world stage in the geopolitics no one belongs to um, no one cares about the other person okay so the swift ban was also not imposed just because the eu or the world was uh, was sympathizing with ukraine but they have kept their own interest in mind also however we cannot blame any country for that because india has also kept its strategic interest in mind and abstained from voting at unsc so we cannot blame anyone right now moving ahead which city has the highest number of ultra high net worth individuals in india as per the global wealth report 2022 so guys mumbai the financial capital economic capital of india okay so the global wealth report has been released by knight frank which is a uk based organization according to this report the global number the number of ultra high net worth individuals has increased by 9.3% in 2021 and the countries which have seen the highest rise in the number of high ultra high net worth individuals are us uk france japan and china respectively okay and till 2026 the number of these people is expected to be more than double okay now what are the facts for india from this report so india has the third highest number of billionaire population Uh, at 145 billionaires after us and china and the number of ultra high net worth individuals have increased so this number has increased by 11% in 2021 so guys the points that i am highlighting here are of utmost importance and these are the points that you need to memorize okay and guys this is the highest percentage growth in asia pacific the 11 percentage growth in the number of uh, the ultra high net worth individuals in india is the highest in asia pacific region mumbai has the highest number of billionaires at the moment okay residing in the city but if we talk about the number or the increment in the ultra high net worth individuals so in terms of growth or in terms of increase bangalore has outperformed other cities in india okay so we have bangalore which witnessed the highest growth in the number of ultra high net worth individuals with 17.1% so here we have 352 high net worth individuals residing in bangalore okay so bangalore's growth is expected to increase by 89% which is the highest increase okay in india uh, and the number of ultra high net worth individuals would be 665 by 2026 so guys this kind of data is sufficient for your examination otherwise uh, if you go into too much detail you would be stranded there only okay and you have a lot to cover so this would be enough from a report like global wealth report next question is another from a Uh, is also from a report what is india's score in the state of india's environment report so here guys 66 is the right answer so out of 100 this score is given to india now the state of india's environment report is released by down to earth magazine okay and as per this report india's position 
basically uh, india's rank in terms of sdg fulfillment or the uh, preparedness of india for achieving the sustainable development goals by 2030 so this is the parameter on which the country is ranked and india is at 120th position last year india was at 117th position now india's position has downgraded has been downgraded by this organization in this report okay which suggests that india would not be able to fulfill the sustainable development goals by 2030 so score is 66 out of 100 state wise kerala is the best performed best performing state because it is completely prepared to achieve the sustainable development goals and following kerala we have tamil nadu himachal pradesh at the second position and these are the states at the third position goa karnataka andhra pradesh and uttarakhand at the level of union territories chandigarh has topped in preparedness to achieve the sustainable development goals then we have delhi lakshadweep puducherry at the second position and andaman and nicobar islands at the third position now guys if you talk about the entire nation then india's rank at 120th position in the south asian region is a really really poor performance is a really really poor rank because all other countries in the south asian region except for pakistan have a really good ranking okay even if that ranking is not really good but they are ahead of us that means india needs to work towards achieving the sustainable development goals so guys here we are at the next question which of the following is not a parameter of the state energy climate index so niti aayog has announced basically to develop the national gender index and also at the same time niti aayog has released the draft of this state energy and climate in index okay so this index has also not been released by niti aayog it is just the draft of this index that has been released and in that draft a uh, certain parameters were given uh, for on which the states will be given the ranking so now you have to identify that which of these is not one of the parameters given by niti aayog in its index so here guys none of the above is the right answer okay i have given you the background of this news national gender index pe bhi kuch bhi nahi aaya hai because niti aayog has just announced that they will create such a index so at this moment we do not have any kind of draft or anything related to this national gender index as far as the state energy and climate index is concerned so we have the parameters on which the states will be ranked so discounts viability and competition first parameter excess affordability and reliability of energy second parameter clean energy initiatives third parameter energy efficiency fourth generation capacity fifth parameter and environmental sustainability and new initiatives this is guys our sixth parameter so far we have these many parameters only and apart from this we do not have any other information on these two indices next question is with which company has indian railway catering and tourism corporation <coughs> partner to provide digital ticketing services to customers through automated ticket vending machines installed at railway stations across the country so here guys paytm is the right answer very easy news nothing is there to be discussed with which bank has edelweiss housing finance entered into a co-lending partnership to offer housing loans to customers so here guys standard chartered bank is the right answer where is fisdom company headquartered so here guys you need to understand that why is this company being asked from you this is not a very big company it is just a fintech company but recently it has remained in news for some or the other reason now why is it in news on uh, basically today so recently it has signed an agreement with upo bank for co lending to msms that is the news now where is it located so it is located in bangalore which bank has launched the corporate liquidity management sol solution and government liquidity man management solution to meet the liquidity management needs of institutional customers so here idbi bank is the right answer guys if you understood it 
from the name itself then it is well and good if you did not understand this uh, solution or the purpose of it then i would recommend leave it okay don't go into uh, such news and mess around with these kinds of news because they are not going to be asked from you in the examination nobody is going to ask you what is the purpose of this management solution nothing and if you can understand it from the name itself then i would recommend you all uh, i would appreciate you all because it is very easy corporate liquidity management solution how to manage the liquidity of the corporates that will be handled through this uh, solution government institution government liquidity management solution how to manage the liquidity the capital okay the liquid capital that is there with the government that will be handled by this glms solution okay and institutional customers the customers that are the the institutions that are the customers of the banks so corporates and governments are clearly the institutional customers of the idbi bank so that is the purpose okay moving ahead how many indian startups have been chosen by google under its app scale academy initiative 100 guys is the number of early to mid stage startups that have been chosen by google under its app scale academy initiative now this initiative was launched in 2021 only and the purpose of this initiative was to choose the early to mid stage startups and train them how can they develop world class applications in india so that is the purpose okay now do remember that google is launching or implementing this initiative along with the startup hub of ministry of electronics and information technology okay next is who is the brand ambassador of upgrad so amita bachchan has been appointed recently who has been appointed as the md and ceo of lic mutual fund limited ts ramakrishnan is the right answer by which year uh, will the electronic bill processing system be rolled out so fy23 by this year this system will be rolled out guys this system was announced in the union budget also union budget of this year also so what is the purpose of this entire electronic bill processing system for all the government tenders for all the government projects there are certain bills for material purchase for the payment of wages etc etc okay so all those bills will be uploaded on this system on this digital system and through this digital system the payment of these bills will be made quickly so in order to fast pace the entire process of payment of bills under the government projects under the government tenders this electronic bill payment system was introduced by the minister of Sa minister of finance in the union budget and right now the ministry has announced that they are going to roll out this entire system in the coming financial year now guys there was a special occasion on which this announcement was made and that occasion was the 46th civil accounts day which is celebrated on march 2nd in india so do remember this fact as well so guys apart from the basic purpose there are certain facts that you need to know regarding the e bill and that is that it has been developed by the public financial management system under the controller general of accounts okay so this is the developer of this system and it will work on the model of first in first out okay then the implementation i have already told you moving ahead ai game changers initiative is a collaboration between nascom and dash so guys here microsoft is the right answer so all the startups individuals who are doing great work in the artificial intelligence field they will be encouraged to submit their solutions to provide uh, their solutions for getting the ai game changer award and with this recognition these uh, startups or individuals will get encouragement and thus the ai ecosystem will be boosted in india that is the basic idea of this initiative ai game changer awards so this is guys the entire initiative okay to encourage the startups or individuals who are going to develop the ai solutions now during the experience ai summit the people or the winners will be given the award so guys here are certain additional facts regarding the artificial intelligence so india ranks at the 8th position 
in terms of AI patent filing on a global level. Okay, data and AI could add 450 to 500 billion US dollars to India's GDP by 2025. And you know that by 2025 to 26, India aims to become the 5 trillion economy. Okay, nearly 45% of this value, of this value, would be delivered in three sectors, consumer goods, retail, and retail agriculture and banking and insurance. So guys, this is just additional information given to you to uh, know the potential of the AI in India. Next question is, how many golds were won by India in the Singapore Weightlifting Championship? So guys, six golds were won and total eight medals have been won by the Indian athletes at this championship. And here are the names of the winners which you can obviously read on your own. Next question is what is the capital of Ecuador? So Ecuador guys is the capital. It's a South American country. When is the foundation day of the National Commission for Protection of Child Rights celebrated? February 8 is the right answer. Where is the headquarter of Sajay uh, Roda Nayak Shirala Sahakari Bank located? Guys, it's a Marathi name. That's why I may have mispronounced it. So I apologize for that. So Marathi say Samajagya Ga Maharashtra. Sangli is the place where this bank is located. Why is it in the news? Because RBI has cancelled its license. Okay. Next question. I have already given you the answer of this question. 2021. So guys here today's session ends and if you like the content provided by us then do provide us with the feedback okay regarding the uh, questions that I have taught you or if you have any kind of query related to the questions to, uh, or related to the topics that I have taught you today you can ask me in the comment section. Also guys you can subscribe our channel and hit the bell notification and rem remember that you will get the PDF of the session on the telegram channel of ours. And the link of the channel is in description. Thank you so much guys for watching the video. I hope that you all go through the examination, whichever examination you are targeting at the moment. Thank you so much again.